All right, uh, I just wanted to show you guys something really cool that I discovered the moment I discovered Obsidian and Cursor. And it's, I discovered them about the same time. I've always avoided Obsidian because I do like a little bit of visual structure, which it does have. But um, once I really started to get into coding and locally hosted servers, I started to see the value in it. But I think once I got Cursor and saw the value of having an agent AI connected to my own files and folders, I was sold on Obsidian because now I can work in some kind of ecosystem that allows an AI agent to be much more personally connected to me and my content and my writing. So I'm going to show you uh, why this is really awesome and this can really take your AI powers to the next level. So uh, Obsidian is cool. Um, I never downplayed it. I, it was just a bit too much for me, but I think if you just kind of simplify you, what you need from it early on, it won't be as overwhelming. And it's awesome because it's fast, because it's working on markdown files and these markdown files can be hosted on your own computer or your own cloud services. And that's amazing because most writing apps are connected to their own server. So they own your content, they own your files. If, if their service crashed, you couldn't really access that unless they had an export feature. But you can't really use those files um, in other apps unless it's like Ulysses, which, which can, but anyways, Obsidian is awesome. It's powerful. I'm trying not to get over complicated with it because I don't want it to turn into a notion bloatware where you're working more on the system than your work. Cursor is blowing up right now. It's a coding software, not specifically a vibe coding software, but it's a software that allows AI to connect to your files and folders that are hosted on your own computer or cloud service. So that's amazing because some AI agents, you have to pay $200 a month to get access to. Cursor is free for some time and with limits, but I paid the $20 a month because I saw how powerful this is and I deleted or canceled some of my other AI software. Um, so it's amazing. And once I saw these two connected to each other, it rocked my world. And it's exactly what I've been looking for from AI. Something where AI is able to really be connected to my work and my repositories where it can pull knowledge from that library to better suit its answers for my specific life. What is a repository? A repository is something I created that is basically a database of all of my information. Something, something that is dynamic that you can change here and there and tweak here and there, but it's like a folder that holds all of your important information that you are storing up for yourself. So for instance, in repositories, I have um, Beyond, okay, this is my brand. And in Beyond, I'll have my branding file, my branding note. And this is where I can have all my branding notes. Then I can have the goals for Beyond, all listed in one note. And then another note could be financial aspects. It could be a table of what I've made from Beyond, what I'm expecting in Beyond, whatever. And what's cool is cursor can be connected to these files and folders and can give me information based off of those things. So also for personal, I have affirmations. So any of my affirmations that I want to look at and reference, I go there. And then my routines, anything I want to reference in my routines, I'll go there. I'll always update it if I change or tweak my routine. So it's always there. So Again, if I wanted to go to Cursor and say, hey, review my routine, help me find out what I can change. Whoa. <laughs> help me find out what I can change in my routine to be more efficient in my morning. And it would reference my routine and say, hey, it looks like this is a little unnecessary. Maybe you could push this to the evening routine. 
Isn't that cool? So, uh, and then I have assets folder in each of the repositories because Obsidian handles images and atta like attachments. And what happens is when you attach an image to uh, an Obsidian note, it doesn't just live in that Obsidian note. It gets uploaded to the vault, to the folder that you designate for your attachments. And it's referencing that path file name in the note. So that's awesome because now my images can be organized all in one area and I can reference them at any point in any note. So that's amazing. Um, so I created an assets folder for each repository, but I deleted some folders because I wanted to show you something really cool, how this AI agent can work with your files and folders. So I'm going to say, um, create a folder in now I'm going to point to the repositories folder as context. So now it's, directly connected to this guy right here. And I'm going to say create a, create a folder in repositories for each of these areas. And I have this saved down here just for speed purposes. Then I tell it to go and the agent runs its thing, does its thing. Uh, it will ask for permission to create these folders. Bam. They were just created. There they are. Uh, I think sometimes it, it, it tries to verify if it did a good job. That might just be when it's on Sonnet thinking. So awesome. Isn't that amazing? Um, this AI agent just totally created these folders for me. Now I want now create at, uh, create an oops <laughs> folder for each of these repositories um, sent. So I don't have to go in each one and assets, 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 copy. I can just simply have it do its thing. Isn't that amazing? So now I have an assets folder in each of the repositories. Um, I love it. I think it's amazing. And I've never seen something like this. Again, some programs are $200 a month to be able to have access to your folders, but cursor is free while limited or 20 bucks a month. And you have access to tons of AI, you know, you have chat GPT 4.0, O one mini Gemini Claude. You have, um, deep seek, a lot of great stuff. So all folders have been created successfully. So now let's see what's something cool we can do now that this is connected. I'm gonna uh, throw myself out there a little bit, but uh, let's say I am going to have an agent or it could be ask. I'm just gonna ask it something. I don't really want it to code anything or create anything. And I'm going to use uh, DeepSeek R1. It's a, you, so many other language models out there that that you can choose from but i'm just going to do deep seek might be a little bit bit more in depth and i'm going to say uh, i'm going to add context you can click here as well and i'm going to point to my affirmations okay and i'm going to say what can you tell me about myself that i may not be able to realize on my own ask uh, it's thinking shows you a little bit of its thought process analyzing your information I noticed several profound patterns that reveal core strengths and growth uh, quiet leadership your focus on speaking up an impactful voice suggests emerging comfort with leadership but you might not realize how your vulnerability actually makes you a more relatable leader uh, transformational wounds the repeated emphasis on freedom from change suggests you've developed remarkable resilience through hardship uh, what might you miss? Your specific pain points have likely given you a unique radar for spotting others hidden struggles. Really cool. Sacred uh, contradiction. You balance seemingly opposing forces. Confidently sharing myself versus embrace guidance. Stand out versus community bonds. Uh, spiritual audacity. Shadow strength. So uh, maybe deep seek isn't the very interesting. Let's try. Let's try um, uh, Claude. 
3.7 now. So let's do affirmations. What can, I mean, you can even just go up here and copy this, right? Or I think you could even just try Claude Sonnet here and just try it again. So that's cool. Uh, just change the language right there. And um, what does this tell me about myself? Yeah, Claude, Claude's pretty nice. I like Claude. So authentic self-expression. Many of your affirmations focus on speaking up, owning your voice, expression, truth. This suggests you recognize the power of authenticity, even though you're working faith, references God. So this is really cool. You know, your capacity as a leader. Uh, affirmations about your voice being powerful and impactful suggest potential leadership qualities you may not fully recognize in yourself. Your courage and vulnerability, your patience and your own growth. So really cool. Uh, now let's say, uh, let's do a new chat. Let's say I just did this journal entry in, um, in Obsidian, just a random journal entry. This is a mock journal entry I put in just for the sake of this. Um, what is that called? <laughs> Preview? Whatever. I forgot what it, uh, man, that's going to kill me. Okay. So anyways, here's a mock journal entry. Now, let's say I wanted to point to this journal entry, right? And then I say, um, create for me a Bible study based on my journal entry. That will help me. Yeah, that will help me. Let's see what it does. <clears throat> Bam, finding God's direction in career uncertainty. That's what, I, that's what this is about. This guy is um, contemplating quitting his job, finding a new job. He's super overwhelmed. And um, this AI agent just totally put together this Bible study based on my journal entry. Come to me, uh, Colossians 2, on making difficult decisions, all these scriptures that I can study out, and then some reflection questions. Um, you can have fun with this. You can try DeepSeek, Grok2, ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT 4.0 is good for stuff like this. So you could, you know, do that if you want. So now you could, if you want, um, you can just say create this in a, um, what, it, what would you call it? Markdown file within uh let's say you had a bible study within or you could let's let's create it within a folder called bible studies within within my ministry folder in repositories um and title it what's the title with the header let's just try that let's see if it does this i'm i'm exploring here uh so i'll create a markdown file with the bible study ministry folder first let me check if that does already exists it doesn't so it's going to create it now i'll create the bible study markdown file with the content uh, god's direction in career uncertainty um well hopefully it didn't just bug out here there we go bam now I have Bible studies in, in here and I can um, see it in here as well. And it looks beautiful, right? Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Based on your journal entry from March 17, 25. Wow. That's sick. And, and I'm sure you can get even more in depth with this. You can create prompts. Um, I'm, I'm hoping I can create a prompt folder and I can add context of that prompt with how I want this done. And maybe there's specific instructions that you can also do for making this process a lot more streamlined. So this is what I've been looking for. So I'm excited to be able to have my database of all my information, branding colors, branding guide, um, strategies, goals, personal notes, um, just this personal knowledge database that now cursor can access and help me to help me by being a much more unique and personal AI agent based on my own specific and unique 
files and folders. So this is super cool. I'm, I'm probably gonna dig into it so much more, flesh it out and try to just share what I'm building and hopefully it helps you guys to also take your AI uh, abilities to the next level. So cursor is just really awesome. It's just cool to see that it's just much more than just a, a coding application. That's it. See you.